Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Malika and I'm a travel content creator and expat and today we're talking about 10 mistakes not to make when you visit London. I just came back from my third trip to London and after a few trips to London, I have to say I can honestly see how much the city has changed over the years and I've learned so much more from this last trip about how to have the best time possible. I wanted to share some travel tips with you and I hope they'll help as you start planning your trip. So keep watching for 10 mistakes not to make in London. not using the tube. If you're from a city where driving is common, you will need to let that go and just get on the tube. The tube is the most efficient way to get around London. It's clean, it's reliable, it's safe, and it's fast. London is pretty far spread out and traffic can get fierce, so taking the tube can really make it faster to get around town. If you are coming to London, make sure you get an Oyster card. It has a small surcharge of around five pounds, but it's going to save you a lot of time. If you buy individual tickets every time you need to ride the tube, it will actually be more expensive and you waste a lot more time waiting in lines every time you need to get a ticket. Get the card and start with around 20 pounds for a three to four day trip, and then add more as you go if needed. And remember, you have to tap in when you get to the station and then tap out again when you leave a station. So do not be the annoying tourist fumbling in your bag looking for your Oyster card for five minutes when it's time to leave the station and people are rushing. And one more note about the tube, there is usually no phone service down there. Like unlike the metro in New York or Paris, there is no phone service on the tube. So make sure you download your route, take some screenshots, because you won't be able to refresh and check while you're in transit. And if it's a long ride, download some articles for offline reading. But also don't over rely on the tube. A lot of the stations are really close together. Like if you look on Google Maps, you'll see you can easily walk in between stops and save some money. And you can also take buses in London, which are really cool, the pretty red double-decker ones. And then you have the added benefit of seeing more of the city. Number two, only looking at Airbnbs. Unless you're traveling with a big group, an Airbnb is not the move. I was traveling with three people and it was significantly cheaper to get two separate rooms at a hotel than it was trying to find a decent Airbnb in a good convenient neighborhood. I've actually never seen Airbnbs anywhere as expensive as the ones I saw in London. And while you can also occasionally find a hotel sale or get a discount code, there are never sales or discounts on Airbnb. To give you an idea, Airbnbs with three separate beds because I'm too old to play bunk buddies on girls trips in centrally located areas were topping $3,000 for a four night stay. But booking two separate rooms at the Bailey's Hotel in Kensington was literally only $1,700, so almost half. If you're planning a group trip, of course, the initial thought may be, oh, we all want to stay together, but keep your options open and consider multiple hotel rooms, something sweet style or like a family style room, because it actually might be cheaper. Number three, not using your coins. The British pound is a strong currency, and while your change can pile up and be annoying weighing down your pockets or making your wallet bulge, make sure you accumulate those coins for a few days and then actually like use them. In London, a pocket full of coins can be enough to actually get you somewhere or get you something. Like, in the US, a pocket full of change may at best buy you a cheap cup of coffee, but in London, it can actually buy you lunch, a drink, or some souvenirs. It's also important to use up all your change while you're in London because while you can exchange the dollar bills back, you actually can't exchange coins for other currency once you're back home. So be sure to use them as you're on your trip or at least at the airport before you board your flight. And you may find a coin donation box at the airport, so if you didn't spend them, consider donating them. A lot of international flights will collect the coins and donate them to a charity, so if you didn't get to spend them before getting to the airport, you can find a way to donate them or keep them for a future trip to the UK. Number four, only doing touristy stuff. London is full of some amazing attractions like the museum, the London Eye, and of course all the Harry Potter tours a Hogwarts fan could think of. But in my opinion, one of the most appealing things about London is the simple neighborhood charm. London is full of busy, bustling areas, but also has neighborhoods that are simply beautiful and are perfect for a casual walkthrough, and of course, photos. Enjoy high tea, take a stroll through Notting Hill, admire the houses. If you're going in spring, check out the wisteria that will be blooming everywhere and just be absolutely beautiful. Just really spend time enjoying the scenery and the quiet, charming neighborhoods. And of course, all that will be absolutely free, which is a huge plus because London is not a cheap city. If you do want to do a lot of touristy stuff, remember it will add up, it will be expensive. So consider getting a London Pass. It covers entry into 80 of the biggest tourist attractions like Tower of London, the Shard, St. Paul's Cathedral, and like a whole lot more. A three-day pass is like 100 to 110 pounds, but tickets to each site can be up to 30 pounds. If you want to see a lot of stuff, the London Pass really is the best way to save. They also have periodic price drops and sales, so check the website frequently in the lead-up to your trip, but just don't buy it too early because the price may drop. 
Number five, not making reservations. In the weeks leading up to my trip, I started seeing tons of articles and posts on Instagram about must try places in London, cutest cafes, speakeasies to die for, and restaurants with the most scenic views. And in almost every case, reservations were required and they started getting sold out closer to the trip. Be prepared to do some advanced planning and make those reservations. You usually can do so online, so don't worry about making international calls. And be prepared to put down a credit card for your reservations. Every place I looked at required a credit card to hold the booking. No one actually charged in advance, but they all warn you that they will if you don't cancel within a certain amount of time, usually 24 hours. And some will also charge a fee for changes to party size, like if you increase your number of guests or decrease that number of guests. So don't let that be a deterrent. Like go to the restaurants you wanna to go to, just be prepared to plan. The ones I went to that required early reservations with the credit card hold were well worth it. Just remember to cancel a day in advance and be sure to get your cancellation confirmation via email just so you don't have any issues. And of course, if you don't care about going to particular restaurants or places that are Instagram friendly or have a great view, then whatever, it really doesn't matter. There are thousands of restaurants in London you can choose from. You will always be able to find some place you can walk into. And also, if you're the kind of travel that prefers spontaneity and hates advanced planning, then definitely don't even bother making reservations at places that require a credit card because you'll probably forget to cancel and then you'll get hit with multiple cancellation fees. But if you know you have particular restaurants you wanna try, just do your planning, make your bookings. Number six, going inside the red phone booths. The red phone booths all over London are so cute and they make for the perfect photo ops. I have to admit I took photos, videos, and reels with them damn near every time I saw one. But do not make the mistake of going inside one because they are absolutely disgusting. I learned that on my first trip to London in my early 20s and I still cannot get the smell out of my head. It was literally traumatizing. Unfortunately, those incredibly cute phone booths are often used as urinals, especially by drunk people leaving the bars and clubs in the middle of the night. They are literal cesspools, like actual toilets. So definitely get your cute photos outside the booths at a safe distance. Don't even think about leaning on one or touching it. Number seven, bringing too much cash. This was hard for me because I live in Lebanon and it is almost 100% a cash economy. But in London, a lot of restaurants and bars have moved to cashless systems, so they will only accept credit cards. We went to several places, usually the more trendy or bougie ones that were credit cards only. So using cards can be really convenient in so many different ways, but if you have drawn too much money from your travel budget, that can really throw things off. It's going to be tricky to find the balance, so think about the total you want to spend on your travel, like your meals, your incidentals, your going out, not the fight in hotel, and withdraw half of that amount in cash, and then plan to use cards to the rest. And be sure to use a credit card that doesn't charge a fee for international transactions, because that will add up, especially if you have a long trip. Number eight, not understanding British English. So obviously I'm American, my English is my native language, but there are a lot of little differences and intricacies about American versus British English vocabulary and slang. So remember things like pounds and pence instead of dollars and cents, or quid instead of bucks. If you're looking for the bathroom that's the loo or a toilet, it's a lift, not an elevator, and it's a bin, not a trash can. If you're waiting for something you wanna get in the queue, not in the line, and if someone asks, are you all right? They're just using a common reading like the way we would say what's up or how are you without really wanting an in-depth answer. Also, the subway or the metro is now referred to as the tube and shopping brings a whole new set of vocabulary as well like sweater equals jumper, tank top equals vest, and so much more that I still have yet to master. But luckily there is YouTube, so watch a few videos, get a quick refresher on British slang and other intricacies of the language, especially if you plan on spending a few weeks in town and hanging out with locals and definitely research proper pronunciation of the popular tourist sites that you want to see because in many cases they are not exactly phonetic. Number nine, only eating British food. Okay, so if you are British, please don't be offended when I say that many travelers, myself included, do not exactly find local British food of any culinary interest. Yeah, fish and chips is good. I could definitely go for a warm shepherd's pie on a rainy day, but in most cases, British food will disappoint you. However, London does have incredible restaurants and a ton of options from various ethnicities, especially the countries that they were busy colonizing. The Indian, the Jamaican, the food from other parts of the Caribbean, even Pan-Asian and Filipino food will all be top notch. So just get ready to eat to your heart's content. And even though I just diss British food, sorry, not sorry, I do love a good afternoon tea. I'm usually team coffee, but I generally don't drink it after like 1 p.m. And the hours of two to four are just perfect for an afternoon tea. Even if you're like me and you don't like love drinking tea, the ritual and the experience is well worth it. 
British afternoon tea is stylish and elegant, the china is beautiful, the canapes and sweets are delightful. They can be pretty expensive though, especially if you go to one of the fancy places that offer like a boozy tea with a champagne and prosecco, but there are a lot of affordable options. So just look for places that offer a set menu instead of unlimited options, avoid anything that includes booze, or look for restaurants that even have like a cream tea, which is a smaller service than traditional tea. So instead of getting the big spread of sweets and canapes and tea sandwiches and all that jazz, you'll get your tea and some fresh pastries like scones with fresh whipped cream or clotted cream. If you want the tea experience without going overboard or just want a quick bite and some relaxation in between activities, cream tea is definitely the way to go. And number 10, not saving your receipts. I talked about this in my video on mistakes not to make in Paris, but it also needs to be said for London. London is an expensive city, and if you are shopping, be sure to get your VAT receipts and get to the airport early enough to get your refund. This mistake can cost you hundreds of dollars, so plan carefully, time your airport arrival, and save the physical hard copies of the receipts. Also, try to keep the things you buy in your carry-on suitcase because they may ask to see the goods while processing your refund. So that is it, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment below. This is one of the videos in a series I'm working on about 10 mistakes not to make and a lot of other places I've been or visited, like places I've been in multiple times and kind of a feel for this city. So let me know if you'd be interested in that series and what city you'd be curious about next. I have London and Paris in the works coming up soon. If you find this video helpful, check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing if you like what you see. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, and one last thing for London, obviously do not forget your umbrella and your rain boots, you will need them. That's a wrap, take care and happy travels.